I grew up in Winnipeg, which is in Canada, in the province of Manitoba. My mother was a super mother. She worked hard all her life and she made women's hats and had several ladies that sewed for her and she supported her family. I had no brothers and sisters. My father, who I loved dearly, was an alcoholic, but as a young person and growing up, I didn't I recognize that. My father couldn't hold a job. I, never, I was never comfortable with bringing somebody home because I would never know whether he you know, had been drinking too much or where he was, actually. My mother supported any sports or things that I wanted to do, and even though we couldn't really afford it, and my father could not function properly to take me down to, say, Baldy Northcott's uh, sporting goods store to get a new pair of CCM skates, but my mother would. And I skated every day after the rinks were freezing. She was uh, always supportive. We would play a different community all over Winnipeg. Then there's kind of a glass ceiling that you'd hit if you weren't good enough. If you didn't continue to improve, then you, you didn't make the juvenile team when you're 15. Hockey, for me, in college was out of sight. In the back of my mind, like any kid would say, gosh, I'd really love to play for the university. But the reality was that that's, that's not a possibility because you're picked out before you get to university who is going to at least try out. My mother, with her hat store, had enough money to pay my way to first year university at University of Manitoba. And then some of my friends that I played with when we were 12, 13, 14, you know, they, they went to the tryout for the university and uh, they would say, well, why don't you come try out? Well, that wasn't a possibility for me. I didn't have the ride, and I didn't have the money to get home if I didn't have the ride, so I just discarded it. So they played an intramural hockey program. Since I played and skated all the time, I, then one day, the varsity coach, his name was Billy Robinson, and subsequently who played for the Montreal Canadiens and who was in the Hockey Hall of Fame, they would all scout the intramural games. He knew my name, or had my name. He said, why didn't you come to tryouts? I said it wasn't possible. I couldn't go every night because I didn't have any transportation. And he said, uh, you don't need a tryout. You're a good hockey player. Come to practice tomorrow and I'll use you. You will make my team. It was uh, a dream come true. Then for five years I played Division One hockey and Billy Robinson was such a gentleman. He liked me and gave me a chance. He gave me confidence in school. He said, you know, you have to attend practice, but you also have to do your homework and progress in your academic achievements. But he always impressed on being a good person, watch who your friends are, and if guys on the team were drifting the wrong way, he'd take them aside and say, you can't hang around with those guys because we're not going to have you on the team. He was a mentor that would want you to play good hockey, but his goal was to make you a better person. But it also gave me the... Uh, strength, God-given strength, of being able to say, I want to graduate in science. I don't care what happens, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to graduate, I'm going to work hard. That kind of put a bug in my ear about maybe I could get into medicine. So I had my appointment with the dean and he said, uh, you can get into medicine. It, it turned out that I found out after the fact that Billy Robinson, the hockey coach, somehow found out and he went and talked to the dean before I had the visit with the team, I talked to Billy Robinson and he said, you're a really good person and we need people like you. And that, that just fueled the ambition even more. So I studied harder. I won the gold medal prize for science after four years. Then I was into medicine. I studied very hard and uh, was near the top of my class and when I graduated was first in class. I could set my, my sight higher than what I expected. So I decided I wanted to be a heart surgeon. I had the privilege of doing the first heart transplant in Minnesota that succeeded. God gave you talent and you've got to find it. But he won't let you down. You don't have to be stuck in one spot. You can succeed. No matter how hard your system is at home, it's still achievable. And God has a way for it if you're willing to work. He's not going to land it on a plate in front of you. You've got to commit to it, and you've got to work hard. You've got to respect your teachers, and you've got to hang around with the right people. 
the road in front of you is open. You just got to find it. If you have hope and if you believe in the people that are helping you as mentors, then the road in front of you will be easier to make. You might not recognize it at the time, but when you get there and look back, that's what made it happen. <laughs>